The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, good afternoon folks uh, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, it's our practical procurement webinar, enlightening you with updates. Um, and I'm really delighted to be joined by um, Graham Cook, who's Managing Director of Zenergy. Um, Zenergy is an organisation that we do a lot of work with, um, with our clients and um, I know that Graham is incredibly knowledgeable when it comes to all things energy. Um, so I know this is going to be a really great session um, and I'm sure everyone's going to get an enormous amount from it, which is great. Um, so today's agenda, a um, little introduction of welcome, which we're doing now, a little bit about webinar etiquette, so just a few instructions to help you um, to get the most from the webinar, um, a little bit about um, Minerva and who we are, um, Graham will then do his presentation, have a little Q&A session, and then a wrap up at the end. Um, so with regard to webinar etiquette, um, everyone on the webinar, apart from myself and Graham, is, is uh, on mute, so that just so that there's no background noise or, or distractions um, at all. Um, if you have got a comment um, or you've got any technical difficulties, then you'll see that there's a raise my hand button on your panel. Um, just click on that and, uh, and I will see that and I'll be able to respond to you and hopefully give you any sort of technical help that you need. Um, as I mentioned um, a moment ago, there is a Q&A session at the end, so if you have got a question for Graham, um, then please type it into the question box on your panel, and I'll present these to him at the end, um, and you'll find the question box um, by clicking the arrow on the panel, which will reveal the box. Again, once you've typed the question in, um, that will appear at my end, and I will be able to present them to Graham at the end. Um, feel free to add them as you go along, don't wait till the Q&A part, um, just add them as you think of them. Um, the webinar is being recorded, so um, for those people that haven't made it live, um, then we will rec we are recording it, and then um, we'll send you a, a copy of the recording. Um, it'll also be available on our website as well, um, so you are able to come back and revisit it. Um, similarly, if you um, if you have a listen and you find it interesting, and you think there's colleagues of yours that would be um, also interested in uh, having a listen, then they're very welcome to register in retrospect, and they can also um, have a listen. Um, just a very brief slide about who Minerva is for those of you that don't know. Um, we're the UK's most successful procurement consultancy focused exclusively on the school sector. Um, so we, we don't work with any other industry sector at all um, and therefore we've got a really deep understanding of schools and their own unique nuances and, and requirements. Um, we don't just set up frameworks and, and give you a telephone number. We sort of come, we visit, we go on site, we get really involved in the projects that we undertake um, and we give you some really detailed reports at the end of it. Um, there's lots of categories of spend that we cover, um, you know, anything from stationery um, to people transport to photocopiers to payroll services. Um, and at the end of each review that we do, you know, we um, are, you know, hope that you will have a compliant and fit for purpose um, sort of product or service. Um, when it comes to energy, uh, we do all of our energy work and contracts through Zenergy. Um, and that's because at the end of the day, um, we, uh, you know, we don't need to work with anybody else. Um, you know, they do a fantastic job for our clients, and so there's absolutely no um, no need for um, anybody to uh, us to work with anybody else. So that's how we've got involved with with Graham and with the team at Zenergy. Um, so I'm now going to hand you over to Graham, um, and he's just going to talk you through um, uh, his slides. Um, so uh, Graham, I'll uh, hand over to you. Brilliant. Thanks, Lorraine. Um, afternoon, everyone. Um, as Lorraine says, I could actually bore you for hours with uh, with all things about energy, but um, my objective today, really, you know, energy is not that exciting, but actually it is a high cost, and it is something that um, you can um, control. Um, it's not rocket science, and hopefully I can give you some things today um, that will... Um, enable you to go away within your schools, within your organizations, um, to actually um, implement, understand, or try. Um, so in terms of the agenda, um, one of the things that, um, sorry, I seem to be having a slight technical hitch. Um, there we go. Um, so in terms of the agenda, one of the things I thought would be useful um, just to cover would be uh, what the markets consist of now. Um, in terms of you know various different charges you pay and, and you know some of the terminology that you, you get to understand, um, then we want to have a look at some of the industry regulation changes. So this is the latest news, if you like, um, in terms of what's happening in energy, what you might want to be aware of, um, and hopefully, as I say, um, notice and, and understand the impacts from your point of view. Um, the, the main bulk of, uh, of the next section is what we like to call bright spark. Um, now we've touched on it lightly in, in other sessions before and, and when we talk to schools, um, but I want to sort of walk you through the process um, and give you some understanding as to what 
um, you can physically do um, that would make a difference to the bottom line. So effectively, some food for thought, uh, as it says there at the bottom. Uh, what can I do? What things um, you know do I need to get my hands on? Um, and as it says at the bottom there, please feel free to ask any questions. And um, as Lorraine mentioned, uh, hit the raise my hand button, whatever it might be. Okay, so. Um, we'll start with what the markets consist of now. So the bulk of what you do from an energy point of view is your energy supply contract. So effectively you've got um, an agreement with um, a supplier, a third party, whoever that might be, and you know what you're going to pay for your energy. Um, now that can be on two bases. Well, it, it, it's a little bit, if you think about it like the mortgage market, um, the best analogy I can give you is you could be on a flexible contract um, that's effectively like a variable mortgage. Um, you could be on a fixed contract, so obviously like a fixed mortgage, or you could have some sort of capped product that you know um, kind of is usually at a slight premium to um, the fixed contracts, but you do have the ability um, you know to benefit if the market comes down, for instance. So very similar in the way that it works, um, and ultimately what you're doing there is agreeing how much per kilowatt hour um, of energy that I use um, is it going to cost me, and what other costs are there associated with that. Now, back in the day, I used to work for sort of Yorks Electricity and Empower um, a few years ago. Um, we used to be one company um, as Yorks Electricity. We used to read your meters. We used to um, go out and um, sort people out who are having problems with, um, you know, the actual supply on site. Um, and obviously, we tend the bills, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the government, in their wisdom, um, in terms of deregulation um, at the time, decided that um, in order to promote competition, what would be good um, is for different companies to get involved and ultimately the customer to have the choice as to where they go um, and who they use for those different elements. So a little bit like we're starting to see now in the water industry, you know, it's just, it's been a long time in coming, in all fairness, but it's starting to get there. Um, so from a metering perspective, you, you can choose who supplies your meter, who maintains your meter, and if there's any issues with it, um, you know that's the company. Now, very often um, that is a um, one-off charge once a year of about four or five hundred pounds. So very often people doesn't really hit the radar. They get the invoice, they pay it. That's it. Um, one thing to bear in mind in terms of metering um, is that you've got two main types of, of meter effectively. So from an electricity perspective, you have what's called a half-hourly meter. Now, as it says there, is very often re referred to as HH. Um, effectively what that means is that it's a meter with a SIM card in it um, and uh, a server, not a person, but a server is dialing it every half an hour. So they're getting a reading every half an hour. So that gives you the ability obviously to understand what you're using when you're using it. The other, the other style of meter is called a non-half hour meter, so NHH, and effectively that's an old man in a van style uh, meter where somebody you know would drive out read the meter you know probably you know from a manager perspective they've got to read it every two years but effectively you know it doesn't happen very often um, certainly in my experience um, but you know obviously you've got a reading at a point in time and then you get another reading um, and you know what you've used in between but clearly you don't know when you've used it what's used it etc etc so um, what you know what we what was brought about as a result of that is what's called smart metering. So um, they've put a little bit of kit or a new meter onto a non-half hourly meter um, and that effectively puts a SIM card in it and does the same job as the half hourly. Um, so you get a very mix, you know, some people have, you know, the smaller electricity meters that are, you know, I don't know, attached to a light bulb in a hallway um, and, you know, the cost effectiveness of putting a smart meter in there is, is not great. So, you know, that's something that may be left, but if you've got a large consuming on half hourly meter, you very often, um, you know, uh, would would look to do um, the, make the change effectively to smart meters. So they're the terms that can also be called AMR, which is automatic meter reading, um, and you know they're the main types of meter metering. For gas, it's very similar. Again, you can have a smart meter or an AMR meter for gas, or you can have a, a normal meter. Um, so that links in quite nicely to the next one, which is data collection. Effectively, who is dialing your meter? Uh, who's collecting those readings and collecting that data? Um, again, as part of the deregulation, we were, um, you know, you now are able as a customer to choose somebody different who supplies your energy who provides your meter and somebody different again who dials it. Um, so ultimately, um, you know, there's a 
a sort of choice there for the customer. Um, very often, the meter in the data collection it, it never hits people's radar just because of the, the costs. You're looking at around three hundred and fifteen pounds a year for data collection. So um, you know that gives you again you get an annual invoice. In some instances, it might go on the supply bill. For instance, as twenty six twenty five. So that's a bit of a you know um, short you know in a nutshell. This is what um, you know the market consists of. Now the industry regulation changes and the additional levies I'll come on to in terms of some of the updates um, and what's happening with some of the some of the smart metering. Um, so as I say, if anybody's got any questions, obviously shout up. But if there's any questions at the end, we we, we can cover that. Okay, so. Uh, um, from an industry regulation perspective, um, we've got quite a lot going on at the moment, which I guess from a political perspective is not a surprise. You know, it's high on on the political agenda. You know, there's a lot of um, sort of people uh, wanting to have their influence, let's say, with regards to the energy industry. So um, there's a few changes that are coming in this year that, that have actually been a fair time in coming, um, but they they are starting to happen now. So the first of which is um, half hourly settlement, snappily called P272, um, half hourly settlement for non half hourly meters. But effectively what it means is you've got a non half hourly meter, so you've got a meter man in a van that would ordinarily come and read it, um, but they, it's a monthly build meter. So where it says profile class 05 to 08, um, that is the supply number. Um, and those two digits are the start of the supply number. Again, I'm not going to kind of go into great detail on buying new science, but effectively the profile class, um, you know, has various meanings behind it. But the 05 to 08, which are the monthly red non-half hourly meters, off gem have turned around and said um, they now need to be um, settled as the half hourly meters. So effectively, we need to get metering in there that enables us um, to um, record and um, report the usage on a half hourly basis. Now clearly that's a, a massive large scale um, program and obviously it requires physical change of meters on site, etc. Um, but all energy suppliers, it says at the bottom there, have been mandated to trade profile classes 05 to 08 um, using the half hourly data from the 1st of April 2016. So that's no small undertaking. Um, I think what we need to understand is is one of the reasons or a key reason why um, you know that that's required. As a as a country, um, you know you hear about people talk about blackouts and things like things like that. But as a, as a country, we need to know what energy we need to generate to meet the supply demand. Um, now, obviously, when you've got metering that's telling you on a half hour exactly, you know, over the internet effectively, exactly what has been used, that becomes a lot easier. Um, and from a supplier point of view, it also means that they, uh, obviously they don't have to send out the meter readers, etc., but they can forecast much better what someone's going to use when they've got that understanding at a granular level. So effectively, that means, um, you know, they can be confident the charges they're paying to the distributors and to um, the, all, the, all the other fixed costs associated with um, what energy has been used, but also as a country, um, as a supplier, they're able to forecast much better. So that's a relatively large change. From our point of view, um, it's great. You know, we can get our hands on more data. Um, we are waiting for the suppliers now um, to enlighten us, um, let's say, sorry, excuse the pun, um, in terms of the actual um, plan, you know, so okay, we're going to start doing the rollout now, no, we're going to wait until next year, um, you know, we're going to ask the customers to pay for it, we're not going to ask the customers to pay for it, but we're going to include it in the bill, you know, there's lots of different connotations, so our job is obviously to understand that and be able to explain that to our customers as to what their options are and how it will impact them. So. Um, Again, you know, any questions as we, as we um, go through, shout up. But that's pretty much the top and bottom of the um, change from non-half hour to half hour metering uh, that's been driven by Opgen. Now, the next one is something that's called contracts for difference. Now, this is obviously a relatively common term within you know trading circles, etc., in terms of futures markets. But effectively, to put it in, in you know simpler terms as I can, is the actual generators um, in terms of investing in clean energy and investing in the you know um, required capacity to be able to generate what we need as a as a country um, need to have a certain amount of uh, confidence around you know their return effectively um, and what the government have said is yeah okay we can make that agreement a nice long-term agreement and we're going to set this price 
Now, what's been passed on to the suppliers um, is what is, you know, a charge that is going to fund that. You know, a little bit like, you know, the feeding tariffs where the government went out and said, yeah, okay, it'd be a great idea for everybody to have solar panels on the roof. Uh, we all knew they didn't have any money, um, but um, they then went to the suppliers and said, great news, you're going to have to pay for it. And then generally what happens is the suppliers go, great news customers, we know where we've got to get the money from. So um, what tends to happen is it gets boiled down into a pence per kilo hour or a charge that's going to be included within um, the unit rates. Now, it's very difficult, obviously, at the outset of a scheme such as this to predict exactly what those charges and, uh, are going to be. Um, because we don't know what the market's going to do and we don't know what you know the impact's going to be. Um, but all the suppliers, again, have got a job to go through and forecast what they think those charges are and obviously include that within their assumptions going forward. Now, the essence of, of what it is is if the market price is at £50 a megawatt hour um, and you know the government um, have agreed £40 a megawatt hour uh, with the generator, um, then obviously the difference... Um, is, you know, they're getting more than what um, they'd agreed at that stage. So that would be a credit back to the supplier. If the price was £30 a megawatt hour in the market and the government had agreed £40 a megawatt hour for the generators, then clearly there's a difference there and that's when the charge would be generated. Now, obviously, until you've used the energy, until it's been generated, you don't know what that charge is going to be. So everybody who's trying to forecast it you know, he's not ever going to be able to give you, uh, you know, it's not an exact science. Um, it's a retrospective charge to the suppliers that they need to make sure they've covered. So down the bottom there, you can see an example of um, the charges. This is one supplier that's come to us and said, okay, we think these are the charges, and they've made various assumptions, as you can see there. So the minimum they're expecting it to be in 2015-2016 is 0.39. Um, a higher estimate at 0.41 and a very high, you know, worst case scenario, I guess, at 1.81. Now, very much again like the feeding tariffs and the renewables obligation, um, you know, there's a, an uncertainty and, you know, for anybody looking at the end column that says 2020, 2021, um, you know, the very high figure or even quite frankly the, the base figure is probably more than you're paying for your energy, you know, in itself um, in some instances. But um, it's, you know, it's worth understanding, um, you know, that, that potential impact. It is worth pointing out, sorry, that's not pence per kilowatt hour, it's pounds per megawatt hour. Um, but, you know, the, the, there's a significant um, difference there in terms of, um, where we are right now and what we're expecting it to be and where it could be in you know five, six years' time. So um, again, something to be aware of. Clearly, it's going to be something that's going to be included within your rates, whether you like it or not. Um, you know, it's effectively a government levy in that sense.